Big Al Podcast with your host, Al Bishop, unfiltered and uncut. I've been thinking about it and I'm like, yeah, as you know, you've been a little bit selfish <laughs> following your passion, but fuck, dude, I get to fight in front of thousands of people, so... Yeah, but that's sure. what makes it all right. And then you get the win, and then it's like worth it. But fuck, three losses on the trot. I think I would have probably retired if I lost that. Yeah, sure, sure. So is that something that's kind of playing in your mind now? Because the last time you were here, you were like, "I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere." Yeah, I know. Well, like, like I wasn't a hundred percent certain. Yeah. Like I knew I got the win against Bruno. Like I knew it. I knew in my heart, in my performance, but. I knew that against the Langer, yeah, and I got robbed, and yeah. So I don't think I was. Oh, well, I, it's obviously the, it was playing there, and you know, can I still do this? Because fuck, bro, to get to a fight for me is hard. Like, I got to like I got I get a massage twice a week from Jess. Um, sure. You know, I see the Cairo twice a week. I've got to roll out before every <laughs> session. I've got to I've got to stretch more than I used to because what my body just can't keep up. Sure. So it's like this, you're toying with the mind, like it's always the, the thought's always there and then you get the win and then it's like, fuck, I can do this until I'm 40. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's been yeah, done. I'm seeing yeah, it easier sure. said than done. But, you know, I wasn't like 100% certain about my performance until I actually watched it. Yeah. And then I was like, I can see where Richie and Chef want, like where they, the direction they want me to go in. I'm not taking it. Like, yes, I got hit. We're going to get hit. It's mixed martial arts. But... I could just, I see where they want me to go. Getting hit less, moving more, using, you know, I, I was more calm. Yeah, you know, the whole camp that told me, right, you've had your fight. You got, you had your scrap with the Langer that you wanted it. You got it. Now, now you, now you fight the way we want you to fight. Sure. And just, just on that, man, the, sitting from, from, from where I was, I, w I was talking to the guys like in the media section, it seemed as though there was a very direct game plan mm -hmm. that was implemented and at times you had to still be reminded like you could see it was almost like you were itching to just kind of <laughs> let go and and, and 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 just scrap it out yeah. and, and, and see where it goes but yeah. I think like Norman was doing really well to like keep giving you the right advice tell you the right thing yeah. reset carry no, no, on Norman, get in, get Norm, out. Norm played, played a big part in that my whole corner actually were, were phenomenal you know at last we had a last minute change Richie, Richie couldn't come down and Quaid couldn't come down and like that's just how things are at FFM. Everyone just slotted in, you know, stepped in, took took on the role, and and you know, Chad, Chad gave me some great advice sure. when he told me to start sparking the leg. He said, yeah. John John Jones his fucking leg, and yeah. I started hacking him with those spark kicks, and that threw him right off, you know. So yeah, everyone played a, a part, but uh, like watching it, and you can obviously hear Norman because he's so sure. vocal. Sure. Yeah, you know, he was calming me down the whole time, which was good because. You know, the, the, we were supposed to fight the same way with the Langer. Um, and you saw glimpses of it in the beginning sure. of the rounds. But then you take that shot and he smiles at you and you smile at him. <laughs> and you're like, well, let's fucking just throw down and see where this goes, sure. you know. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. I listened to the corner. Like, I fought the way they won me for the fight. Yes, there's always room for improvement. But uh, we, we're heading in the right direction. Sure. It was, it, it was quite a strange thing to see because what was ringing through to me was kind of even at this part of your career, there was still a maturity about the way you handled that fight because there was a l long periods of the fight where he was kind of sitting back waiting to counter. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think in his mind, he was trying to lure you into that scrap. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that was his plan and he had yeah. nothing else to offer after that. Yeah. I mean, he, he came forward for maybe like a minute of that entire fight yeah. or from the way I saw it. Yes. And he was trying to lure you into that, you know what I mean? And, and even at that stage of your career, you still had the ability to show the maturity to say, I'm, I'm not going to get lured into yeah. that. Stick to my plan. I'm it wasn't this easy. <laughs> no, no, you could see it. That's, that's, <laughs> how I, uh, that's how I fight and I think that's how I've won so many fans. Like, I had some idiot on, on social media say to me, like, are you boring now? And so I was like, <laughs> The, the dude's obviously never fought a day in his life, but you know, for me, it's uh, I'm at the point now where it's longevity. Sure. Um, you know, whoever he is must go have a look at my career. I, I've sure. had more wars than most guys, and it's about longevity now. You know, scar tissue. You know, like one of the, I heard one of the reasons you know the judges robbed me in Cape Town with the Langer was because it looked like I'd taken more damage, but 
I've been fighting like 10 years longer yeah. than him, you know, like a punch on my right, or if, you know, I catch a punch on my left eye, or my, no, my right eye, it's going to, yeah. it's going to swell more than, than sure. his, you know, I've got that, that scar tissue build up and yeah, but no more wars. I, you know, <laughs> I want to try to say that, but I want to try like, you know, it's like I said, longevity and, and not taking like, you're going to get take damage, but it's not taking unnecessary damage. You know, I've, sure. I've had my scraps and, you know, I'm at the point now where I can use my experience. You know, I see, I saw uh, like my movement threw Bruno off. He didn't know what to do with my movement. Um, I threw, I mean, I'm, I'm a firm believer that fighting is all, you know, it's all a beat. It's all at a beat. And my movement and my fakes and all of that messed with his beats and his timing and, and it threw him right off. Um, and I showed, he didn't throw as much as I was throwing. You know, he just was just waiting for the counter and then I would like a half a shuffle in two steps out or to the left, to the right. And like all of a sudden he's like, now what? You know, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy now that I've, I've seen the performance. Um, you know, the hardest part of that fight was coming back from Cape Town and having to reenact the whole 15 minutes with my son. Yeah, <laughs> that was the hardest part, you know, <laughs> you, you like, he loved it. He, he loved it. Um, He's got this thing that because he's like red power ranger sure. crazy that the red corner has to win and you know i think sean delanga was in the red corner so he'd obviously seen that fight and he's <laughs> like no the red corner has to win so i actually manipulated being in the red corner for this fight by choosing red kits and yeah. what have you and then it also happens that i got the win so obviously i had to come back and reenact it and then he's like no dad you should have done this and you should have done that <laughs> and i mean he's four years old you know he's jeez but it was tough i mean yeah. i bruised ribs and Sure. to roll around with him on the mat was sure. <laughs> the hardest part because i felt good after that fight you know i felt like i could have gone another two championship rounds yeah. could have gone another three rounds so you know even at my my old age my cardio is still great you know i worked really hard with rory <coughs> in the conditioning room i was i've been lifting with hank so you know i put on a bit of muscle um yeah my con like i just feel i'm just getting better and better so yes it's harder for me to get through the uh, six or eight week camp um but you know i've like finally started listening to my team and richie's like the key is just to train like just train sure. and get better and better and better and like your body will adjust and and you get used to the workload i mean sure. we're under especially at ffm i mean we're under a massive workload there um just because you know we got to dot all the r's and cross the t's sure um and I feel, yeah, it's all starting to pay off now. So some will say it's boring fighting. Some will say it's smart fighting. Those that understand yeah. will say it's smart fighting. But yeah, I'm happy to get the win. It's, you know, it's those pictures that everyone was sharing, sure. like they've said it all on my face. So I think that that one picture by Rock, you know, yeah. captured it. Oh, you Even you posted yeah, it. Sure. You really captured what it meant to me. Um, and as long as, you know, you, like it showed it on my face so as long as it keeps meaning that much to me I'll, i'm gonna keep giving it 100 percent. you know i'm not done i said it after the fight i'm not done yes it's a little bit harder but getting the win makes it you know makes it worthwhile yeah, you know you get the win purse um obviously yeah maybe not a fight of the night but also it's hard to get fight of the night when your, your opponent doesn't really want to engage you know, they, when I was signing the deal, signing the fight, I said I was saying to them, "Yeah, but he's not going to engage. Yeah, oh, but you'll get a bonus." <laughs> yeah, I know I'll get a bonus because I come to fight, but he's not going to engage. So you're making it virtually impossible for me <laughs> to get a bonus. <laughs> but yeah, that you know, that being said, you know, I got the win, so I'm happy. No, sure. And just on that note, with with Bruno Makulu, mm. how do you how do you react to him? Uh, obviously, straight away his reaction is to go online asking for the rematch. Saying <sighs> Dude, he you know robbed. this this brings me this brings me to the point um, that I've been wanting to make for a long time. Is that uh, a lot of the the current trend in South African MMA is to blame someone else, <laughs> find excuses. Um, you know, guys need to just start taking the loss like a man. You know, I I didn't cry bow you know to to efc when 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 i got robbed in cape town um i'll speak about it openly on platforms like this but it's my point in view and i'm entitled sure. to it but you know i didn't do enough to get the win and you guys need to start taking ownership of your loss you can't you can't blame everyone else um you know his corner even 
said to chef or to trezor in the back in french that you know he just didn't come to the party tonight he just wasn't firing he was i think the exact words was he was sleeping but take ownership of your loss you know you're the hometown boy yeah. in cape town so you got the judges on your side by the looks of things yeah, sure <laughs> and then and then you you know to take take it like a man take the loss like a man you got the judges on your side you're the hometown favorite um and then you get you know the three judges not one judge mine was a split decision you know my last loss was sure. a split decision but three judges unanimous decision so three different people you know maybe from three different countries you i don't know how the judging works here exactly I, that's why i'm a fighter but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah take it like a man and move on you know the sports you have wins and you have lo you have losses and you know you take the losses like the man and you take you take the wins and you're humble about them and you move on and i've moved on so unless sure. bruno goes on a massive run of wins and efc feel we need to fight again then then so be it but right now i've got the one and i'm moving forward um yeah yeah man it was such a strange thing for me because if, if i'm 100 percent honest i'm i'm not a massive fan of bruno makulu like he's i understand he's got a fighting style and there are certain fighting styles and some guys are counter strikers and things like that but it's one thing to be a counter striker but to not even like try and engage becomes very frustrating and i mean he's we all know his engagement issues yeah. it's, it's not a secret it's not yeah. a joke it's if, called being scared exactly like in my mind when i was watching that fight trying to be as liberal as possible and and see what he was saying there's no round he didn't win a single mm. round in my opinion I, I i couldn't find one yeah you know there was there was literally about a minute when he was pressing forward yeah and like i don't know man i don't know if it's he he, he does a bit of tv acting or something that he thinks that he's still in front of the cameras that yeah. he, he like stands with his hands down acting like a moron i'm like but let's get on with the fight yeah you know well I mean? you know like, that's why we fought this fight the way we did was you know he doesn't want to engage he's going to wait for you to engage and try to pick you off with a lucky shot um you know i i think i won the mental mental battle of that fight when he was walking into the cage i went and after he did his whole show he danced the whole way to his own song yeah <laughs> by the way by the time was it his own song jeez <laughs> yeah anyways um <laughs> but yeah he, uh, wait, i went and waited for him at the cage door sure waited for him like this is my house yeah. this is my house and he did his little thing and i've walked with him and i had something to say to him and you know that pissed him off straight away because he came out aggressive for a little bit and you know as soon as i started doing my thing and i found my rhythm started putting him off then he wasn't sure and then i think he came at me again halfway through the third but yeah. that's only after i'd upset him when i started sparking sparking the front leg you know with the john Jane kick and yeah it is what it is you know sure. i got the win um unanimous decision uh so there's no there's no room for anything that was you know three different people unanimously felt our our one and that's it i'll move forward you know you won't get a rematch unless we're both vying for a title at some point but yeah okay it's done <laughs> no 100 percent for sure not want to <laughs> yeah. see that fight again um <clears throat> so let's just tap into that uh, you, you mentioned that photo and it was it was something that really jumped out to me i, I mean obviously rock caught such an such a emphatic moment you know what i mean and it's one of those weird things about the fight game like when you like for someone like me and i sit and look and i'm like jeez it man it's you can see on your face exactly what's happening you know what i mean like guys that have followed your story and followed your career might be able to really understand what's going on there because it's it's not only three losses it's 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 three big losses you know what i mean so it, it, it was drickus uh it was cam pritchard and it was a fight that really could have gone either way uh to sean delanga yeah. and there was a moment in it was in cape town when you fought sean delanga i was walking out and you were walking back in i think from the hospital and it was like like it was a weird moment for me because it was kind of like this like limping soldier kind of thing you know what i mean there was nobody there was no <laughs> teammates there was yeah. no crowd there was no yeah like the glory was gone and you yeah. were just limping your way back to kind of <laughs> see what was going on you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. and it was such a weird moment for me because i was like i remember that was i think i came back to the casino sure. to find everyone yeah sure because i'd found out about the bonuses and all yeah. of that because we got double fight of the night i was like 
fuck that. I'm going back to drink. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I was. I was sitting. I was. I felt I'd got robbed. I was lying on the hospital bed. And you obviously picked it all up because I was feeling yeah. like sorry for myself. Sure. And then I was like, okay, I got the bonuses. I'm going to go back and have a drink with my teammates who were all still there. And we came hobbling through, you yeah, know, with sure. Quaid and, and, and my girlfriend. I was like, yeah. So you obviously picked it all up. Eh? Yeah. So like, I, I remember going home and I was thinking, I was like, geez, I wonder if we'll see him fight again. You know what I mean? Like, it, it just looked like you were wearing a little bit. You're like, yeah. you know, the, obviously, your mind was in a bit of a weird place and there were obviously the physical physical side to it so to be there again to see you win was was a special moment for me like to see okay you know there's you do still have that ability to stick to a plan and, and, and not get sucked into that yeah, uh, into that thrash pool, yeah. you know and then the photo came out and i was like you know it, it, it tells such a story because it's it's such a lonely road at the end of the day you know what i mean and there's yeah. such like a like a mental battle every single day you got to you got to try and convince yourself i mean not only like at this stage of your career at any stage of your career you got to convince yourself you know like that mm. i am good at this and, and i will beat this man and, and all of these things so wh what has it been like mentally to, to get to where you are now like yeah. you know have you been thrashing around you know back and forth you know maybe this isn't for me i've still got this i still don't have this or like what yeah you know. it's i mean it's all of those reasons yeah. they're, they're all playing a factor you know can i still do this you know um cameron said after his fight you know this this the sport you can have the highest highs and the lowest lows um and i was actually chatting to drinkers at the airport about like he started my, my run of losses um and you know coming from him i really respected he's like yeah but you, you had also you had just changed camps you were figuring out your new style yes he's right but i still had those losses and, and i had to deal with them and, and in all of that also in my personal life you know my my ex and i i think just before cam had split up you know the mother of my child so i was, I was going through all of that like emotionally as well um said to me i didn't tell any of my team my team at the moment we got to cape town i was like quiet you know and then told them afterwards <coughs> and you know, they were like, and I, the only reason I didn't tell them was because I knew Rich would f f have said, you know, like, you, you, maybe you shouldn't fight. And, you know, I'd like, I'd blocked it all out. In my head, I'd have blocked it all out. And, you know, I take the losses like a man, but they could have been playing, play, played a factor. Um, you know, so like the mental side, like we go, we go through so much, not just through training and like in our own lives. We all got lives. We're fathers, you know, we're fathers, we're husbands. Um, and so you, you got to deal with all of that, that, that too. And, you know, MMA is a demanding thing. It's like it d demands like the majority of your time. You know, you got you got to put the work in and like to be to perform at the level we're performing at. You know, I'm not working a normal job. You know, sure. like yes, I have my gym and I have my businesses, but like uh, MMA comes first in my day. So I'll have my morning clients, and then my day starts at eight o'clock, the same as the same time as everyone else's. And you know, then I'm busy again until throughout the day you know so it's your your two three sessions a day um of your different styles and then plus we've got to fit in conditioning as well so it's like it's a massive demand and you know it's a lot of people can't can't get their head around that yeah like, sure. you know but but for what and that's what's we do it we do it all because we want to make ourselves like the best i want to be like the best mixed martial artist i can be not like in the world and all of that because i'm getting older i got into into the sport very late but i just want to be as as good as i can be and i want to i want to leave like a legacy behind for my little boy you know which is already picking up on like i'm his superhero sure. you know? <laughs> so I just, it's little things like that but it's like the mental side is massive especially now like now like to get to the fight is i feel it's easy like yes it's hard on my body but it's like it's repetitive day in day out as long as you're putting in the time you your body's going to be what, where you need it to be but the rest of it is all mental you may think something's not affecting you but you know it's there it's in the, it's in the back of your mind i mean all all my losses could have gone changed on the drop of the head on the drop of a head and i would have passed in the glory sure um you know i remember catching drinkers with some elbows um and that's again when he shot for the takedown cam i rocked early yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um and again being over eager i stepped in when i should have stepped out um and you know the lunger also could have gone either way so you know that the, all i could take from that with those but those were the positives i could take from the, those fights and then and then drekker said to me yeah but you also you know you just changed camps and you know you were figuring out this new style and you know new stresses on the body and all of that and 
and you start thinking he's like yeah he's right and again we all evolving the whole time and i knew leaving where i was that time at the smiths and going to fight it would be a whole new ball game with me now i'm going to where there's like a class full of champions you know champions in different divisions into guys you know that are ready to go like international i knew it was going to be a big ass for me and like now i'm finally realizing like yes i can hang with those guys you know what i'm saying yeah sure even though a lot of them are older than me i mean sorry younger, younger. than me <laughs> a lot of them are a hell of a, a lot younger to me and i like i pass on like openly freely my knowledge and you know some of them some of them take advice from me and like i learn from them like you know, I've got to listen to what Demart has to say. You know, sure. Demart's like he's two two division ch champion. You know, he's undefeated. You know, he's a really, I, I believe, a good talent. Um, and so what he when he has to say something to me, I like I listen to it. I listen listen to what Boyd has to say. Obviously, my coaches, um, Marty and I. You know, we, we train together a lot of the time, and I like training with Martin because with him we can push the pace without like really having to hurt each other we know how to you know we know how to control sure. our strikes and what sure. have you so you know we i can go with martin i can have blitz round put in the work make myself feel like i want to puke but at the <laughs> same day i don't have cuts concussions <clears throat> and 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 you know and always my sparring rounds i have to have one round with the mark just for the the pace and the freak sure. frequency of of what he brings you know he's very comes with that intensity and like you don't stop for five minutes yeah <laughs> so like i have i have the guys who i like i like training with but i mean we've got a great bunch of guys down there i mean you well yeah. aware of who's all there and sure. yeah we just get and everyone's got the same goal let's get better sure so i, I, be, I believe you know I, i'm gonna make a run for the title I may be the oldest champion yet in the EFC's <laughs> books, but I can, I'll make a run for the title again, provided my body holds up. And uh, sure. that's the big thing for me. Now I'm putting a lot of thought and, and effort into stretching and, you know, prehab stuff. Uh, Rory and I, on a Monday now, my first session on a Monday is to get my body going. Okay. You know, wake it up. So we'll meet at, at the gym, which is also where my gym is, at yeah, sure, Four Elements. Yeah. Wake the body up, and I'm, then I'm ready for to tackle the week's week's training okay so is that part of a new dimension of training for you obviously you, you say a monday session is different are you into this trend now where as guys are getting on in their careers starting to maybe tape down on the sparring like less no still sparring but a little bit lighter maybe yeah yeah you know that's that's down that's down to that's richie's system sure. you know richie richie started implementing that like a while ago you know coming from the smiths we used to bang there at the smiths yeah, sure. i got to fight fit and we used to throw down you know i think that's also i gained a lot of my my respect was i came there and you know just in sparring i got stuck in you yeah. know your first sparring session at, you know there oaks are gonna come for you yeah, sure. so you know i got stuck in and and, and now <coughs> obviously rich has implemented he's like toned it down so you know we, we have our hard sparring like once a week um which is normally on a friday and we spar with the big 16 ounce gloves full shin pads like fight but it's basically we're gonna yeah. fight each other on fridays <laughs> and then Just a yeah you know we have option if guys want to wear headgears and stuff like that um and then we also we got to do to the boxing gym on a wednesday and we spar spar the boxes yeah that's so that's a new thing eh? that's quite a recent thing now yeah that, that's that's, that's a recent thing colin which Nathan, is implemented eh? yeah um boyd was going to colin a while ago richie went we went with and then richie said look on wednesdays we roll 8 a.m and if you guys want you can come roll again in the afternoon or we can go do the boxing sparring and i'd missed it again and i knew how good it was for me because of like the frequency of like how you're throwing and that and for the footwork and yeah so we spar wednesdays and you know the boxers also uh, want to show you yeah, sometimes sure. who's <laughs> who in the zoo <laughs> be lack if we could like leg kick them <laughs> or double leg them yeah, or something sure. just to like show them you know <laughs> but yeah we he's an implement of that and then we also do like a lot of technical technical sparring which sure. is with the the you know the sparring mma gloves sure so we do land on each other obviously we're always vassing up we do land on each other but you're not like trying to knock the guy out um and it's no shin pads you know that's just so we can find with our kicks obviously now and again this hard kick's gonna go through and you sure. know, have dead legs and stuff sure. like that but it's all conditioning um but yeah that's testament to richie's program you know so we, we have i think you know like back to what you what we were talking about was he's definitely toned down um okay. 
Yeah, less damage for the guys there. <laughs> yeah, sure. It seems to be in in most MMA camps, it seems to be the trend. A lot of guys, I, I think where a lot of people realized was to hear someone like uh, Donald Taroni say that he mm. doesn't actually really even spar anymore. And you're like, what? You know, this is a guy who probably bite the, the head off a snake, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just to see what it would taste like. So I think it's it, it, it's a massive global trend in, mm. in MMA in general. A lot of the big camps are kind of toning it down. Look, I, I, I can't say enough which one works better, but I think it makes more sense to me. You know yeah, it mean? makes more sense in terms of, I mean, if you have a look, guys are now competing into their 40s, yeah, sure. you know, which has given me hope. So yeah. guys are competing a little bit later, and, and, and maybe that's testament to, to taking less damage in the gym. Sure. You know, I'm old school, so I'm a firm believer in you You fight the way you train. Sure. <laughs> so train hard, fight, fight each other in the gym. But at the same time, like you, like well, we've been doing it so long, and, you know, Cerrone maybe longer than me, and guys like even John Wayne Parr and that, that, you know, I think once you've been in those dog fights and and you've had like, jeez, oh, man, like John Wayne Parr has almost got like 300 fights or something, 500 fights. Jeez, it's ridiculous. Something crazy like, like that. I don't, yeah. Like, yes, you put work into your, your preparing for the fight, but you don't have to like really kill each other in sparring. Like you've developed that, that mental aspect you need that, that comes with, with age. Sure. You know, which is being more relaxed, seeing things before they happen knowing what you're doing and already that is like already making you 100 percent calmer because you've done it you're not like anxious like okay, i've got to do this and this is sure. just everything just happens sure you see the punch coming you step off or you slip it you block it or whatever it is um <laughs> so age has its yeah you know where we lose you know our youthful edge you know age definitely brings more to the arsenal sure <laughs> All right, let's have a look. So, what's what's next for the lion? What's what's immediately in front of you? Immediately in front of me, I want to I want to fight soon. Yeah. Um, you know, I just keep saying I don't have long left, so I want to I want to like get as many fights as I can. Um, we've been we've been talking Joe Cummins. Um, I haven't really heard anything from whoever. Um, I don't know if that camp's going to really put their foot back in this country. <laughs> after after <laughs> Baiti getting whipped, but uh, yeah, I I don't know, don't know what it holds. I want to fight in November. Um, I don't care who it is. Uh, November. I haven't fought in Joburg for two years, so our friends, family, fans, everyone's like, when you coming back to Joburg? So yeah, I want to compete in November at Carnival City. It's kind of like my home home sure. ground for me, and you know I've I've haven't fought there for two years, but. I've been on this massive journey um, of of downs and now obviously an up. So yeah, I wanna I wanna bring my new skill set back to back to Joburg and I wanna give my my, my fans you know a taste of the new Dino, um, <laughs> okay. show them what I got, um, show them what I've I've gained in this time. Um, yeah, obviously everyone's still following it on TV and stuff, but I think there's nothing like a live event. Yeah, so. sure. I'm pretty sure I can fill Carnival City up. Um, yeah, so it doesn't matter who it is, um, whoever EFC C fit really. But uh, yeah, just give me a fight. That's all. That's all okay. I want. Give me a fight. Okay. <laughs> so there's, I suppose, the EFC is kind of like it seems like everything has come to a halt now with with the filming of the fighters. So yeah, it's it's quite strange. Is um, this card's done? The next one's done, but. There's not even a fight announcement for Carnival yet. It's all like all on all on ice at the moment. Yeah, I think it's all on ice. They they've got their hands full with this mm. production, but you know the the show must go on. You know? 100%. It's, it's not it's sure. not just about sure. the the ultimate fighter thing series they they're filming. Uh, but yeah, the show must go on, and I'm sure I'll hear from Cairo, Calvin, or Graham soon. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I just want to just get, get on the card is the main thing. Doesn't matter who. Um, yeah who would who would you I, I know you say it doesn't matter who but like my my advice always to fighters is always name a name you know what i mean like yeah obviously we've said joe silk cummins uh, i agree with you i think it might be a while till we see one of those boys back in the country if not joe silk cummings bearing in mind that you've said that you still want to have a crack at the title mm. so you've got to kind of look at that well, division let's, and let's be honest though <coughs> let's be honest yeah. open and frank here like sure. now that drickus is a two division champion how the hell are the middleweight 
fighters and the welterweight fighter is going to get a crack anytime soon because sure. you got one man who and if you're a champion you only really fight twice a year okay so now you got one man who that's a two division champion how's anyone going to get a shot at that title anytime soon also so, also bearing in mind that the way they explained this fighter series is that the winner will get a they originally said it will get a crack at the winner of Drikus and Bahati. Now, with Drikus winning that title, these are middleweight contenders that are going to fight for a middleweight belt, was yeah. what the way I understood it. Yeah. That being said, where does that leave either division? It's it, it's going to be the same scenario, I think, where, where Drikus is going to be forced to relinquish a belt or defend a belt or defend both. Some, I don't know. Yeah. It's a tough one. So, Well, let's be honest. If... I mean, not that I deserve a shot yet, but if I had wanted a shot and he's got both belts, I'm going to say I want to crack at both of them. Sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sure. Just because I, I, just because I can. But yeah, I don't see. That's why it's like, if you got title hopes and aspirations, maybe go get some international experience in between. Sure. Because, like, how you, how's anyone going to get a crack now? Is he going to defend? So you, technically, there's only going to be. The champion only fights twice a year, so technically there's going to be one welterweight title shot a year and one middleweight title sure. shot a year <laughs> until such point one of the belts are relinquished. So, you know, if you got if you're an up and coming fighter and you got hopes and dreams, then maybe try gain some international experience. But you know, for me, I just I just want to fight, dude. It's, I've had the belt. <clears throat> the belt bought me nothing extra. <laughs> sure in in my life you know i'm still dino the line so yeah it's for me it's about fighting and if the belt comes it comes if it doesn't you know i just need to get fights in between that but now looking at it now it's, it's gonna be long time till there's a title shot you know i mean i've got to at least maybe one another one emphatically we'll get another two wins before i'm even like spoken about so yeah, it doesn't, doesn't make sense to me. It's just made life a lot harder for the rest of the org organization. What about um, Dina Bagatini, Sean DeLange 2 at Carnival City? <sighs> love it. <laughs> yeah, I'd love another crack at that. Yeah, just because we've done one in Cape Town, so let's do one. You know, and I like Sean. We, we spoke again. Um, I saw him down there. Um, I, think, I think they all got a stomach bug. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of guys did. Um, and if there's a gastro or stomach bug going, I'm very susceptible to it. So how I didn't get it, I'm <laughs> amazed. But yeah, there were a few guys down there. The Timber yeah. also had landed up fighting with gastro. Hence the reason why he had no chin um, and couldn't hydrate properly. But yeah, I mean, that's that's his discussion with, 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 with everyone. But yeah, so I'm sure, you know, he's missed a fight. So I'm sure he's going to want another crack before sure. the year's up. And yeah, why not? Eh? I mean, the first one was a humdinger. So yeah. yeah, to me, it makes absolute sense. Yeah. Because there's, you know, I, I'm never one for uh, a rematch based on a controversial decision or like a, a, a maybe some people don't agree with the decision because most of the time with those things, you're like, well, you know, the fights happened, this person won. But with you guys, like it was literally on a knife edge. You know what I mean? It was, yeah. ah, man, <laughs> you know, like someone says to me, like, how, how do you see it? I'm like, but to be honest, I think Dino's edging it. But in this sort of situation, it, it can go either way. way yeah. You know what I mean? And when yeah. you leave it like that, mm. especially when someone's fought in like a hometown, yeah. to me, it makes so much sense to, to rewind yeah. that and, 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 and reverse oh, the I'll role. I asked for know? it straight away. Sure. I said, before I'd even left Cape Town, I think I was on the phone to Calvin the next morning, you know, because I can check. I've been there so long, I can chat to Calvin or Cairo like that, you know, I can phone sure. them on a Sunday. Sure. <laughs> I've had many <laughs> chats with Calvin on a Sunday, but yeah, it's, you know, it's, again, it's up to them, but yeah, you know, purely just because we came there and we try to knock the snots out of <laughs> yeah, each other, sure. you know what I'm saying? And then that's, that's what the fans really want to see. Sure. Um, yeah. So why not? Let's have that. Let's get the rematch out of the way. Um, no, but failing that, I mean, who really, I'll say, I think I've pretty much fought everyone. Um, sure. Until there's some new guys coming up, um, but yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to just you know I need to get a few more wins, um, and then I'd like to start looking at some like big international names, you know, that okay. are currently signing and coming through. So, but yeah, I got to get back to winning ways, and you know, I still have a lot. I feel a lot in me. Um, so yeah, maybe even one or two international fights for me with some big paydays. I mean, I've 
bloody deserve it. You know? Sure. <laughs> I've given South African MMA a lot and yeah, it'll be nice if I could start getting a return on it all. Man. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%, man. It was one of the things I was saying is that uh, I think as it, when the curtain eventually closes on your career, if there's ever a Hall of Fame for MMA, you're definitely going to be one of the guys out there, you know what I mean? Because you've, you've fought hard for so long, you know what I mean? And, it's, and you've also been a guy who's transgressed MMA to the public, you know what I mean? Not a lot of guys can do that. You know what I mean? If 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 you had to go walk in the street and say, do you know anything about South African MMA? And somebody would say, like, oh, yeah, I've seen it on TV. And you say, do you know this guy? Do you know Bagatti? Oh, yes, yes, I know him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's it's one of those things. It's it's There's there's a couple of characters who will always stick out in MMA. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whether yeah. it's locally or internationally, where your 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 casual fan will always recognize somebody. Yes. You know? Anyway, you know, well, it's th that, that, you know, I appreciate you saying that. And, you know, it's... It's really humbling to to hear something like that, and you know we've also you know, like you think about it, you know uh, Gareth would also be one of them, and you know Chef would be one. Sure. Of them. Again, these are all the guys from EFC One, you know. Sure. So it's the same faces that they've seen, you know, over and sure. over and over and over again, and <coughs> it's awesome. It's awesome to to know that's how you feel. And yeah, maybe one day Hall of Famer, but <laughs> you know, right now still you can only be a Hall of Famer once you've retired. And sure. That's still, still, uh, yeah. I haven't considered it. You know, okay. I said, I, I put a number on it, and I, and I said, at the time, because I, I felt I had to make a decision for myself, and I said to myself, all right, ten more fights. Okay. And everyone's like, ten more fights, but ten more fights. If you fight in like three a year, four a year, can can go really quickly, or you can drag it out as uh, for two a year. So yeah, I said ten more fights, and I'll call it a day. Or at least see where I am, um, but yeah, it's, I love I love this, and you know any fighter, you know Marty was saying like Martin was telling me, you know, I, I we bride at his house because he obviously leaves for the states this week. We had a bride at his house on Friday. He's like, yeah, I yeah, know he's gonna retire, and he's like, by, I think he said like thirty seven or thirty eight. I don't you remember the exact, exact? I was like, bro, never. <laughs> I don't fucking believe it. I was like, never, ever, bro. I was like, and, and then what? And then what? What are you going to fucking do then? Yeah. At 38, you're still, you're still going to be banging the lighties in the gym because <laughs> you know, you're still going to come train and you're going to think, why not? You, you can't. Same as me, I can't give a date because as long as I like can keep going and as long as I can fight, I'm going to fight. But not because I need the money. Because I've I don't fight for the money. Yes, the money's nice, and it's sure. like it adds to the lifestyle I live. Because obviously, you know, you got you need money to to be a, sure. a pro fighter. Because you know, when times are hard, you got you need something to dip into. But we we love to fight. We, we're old school. You know, we grew up fighting in the streets and in clubs and and stuff like that. Mm. And we're not because we were trying to be the breakers you know we <laughs> sure. did it because we love to fight <laughs> <laughs> you know and i said to him there's no ways i was like because me i'm gonna fight till i'm 40 at least yeah. you know because as long as i can and if i'm winning maybe even longer <laughs> and i might even retire and like make a comeback you know provided i'm still training like you know richie's like i said earlier like he wants us training and that all the time and i've started adapting that now and if i'm still training and haven't been out of fighting for a year you know, being out for a year and then making a comeback is a harder task yeah, to making sure. a comeback if you're still, like, f fresh and ready and giving the lighties a go in the gym. You know, they can't, they, they can't believe how young, how, how young I am at <laughs> FFM, you know? <laughs> young on the mat. Yeah, man. young on the mat. That's you amazing. know, so, I mean, we love to fight and shit, to put a time on it. You know, it's going to be, like, it's going to be hard for me to, to say goodbye that... You know, I've seen it. I was speaking to Dirk after the win, yeah. you know, and, and trying to say goodbye. It's, geez, they might even see me cry. <laughs> honestly, it's going to be hard for me because I, I love it that much. And, you know, that now that I've get I've, I, I've had the opportunity to compete. You know, when I started this, I've never in my wildest dreams imagined competing on this level. Sure. It was, I was doing it because, you know, I got into tie boxing because I'd seen it. I'd followed it. I got Blixomed on the tube in the UK. <laughs> and I was like, I'd always fancied myself, but now yeah. two guys gave me hiding. I was like, now nah, I'm gonna go learn properly. <laughs> now they're gonna get it the next time. <laughs> and then like I started training, and then I started having amateur fights. And you know, my ex now, would, you know, my, my 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 girlfriend at the time, you know, I said to her like, imagine like one day me doing this full time. And she's like, yeah, can you imagine? Like I'll support mm. you fully. And 
and she stuck by me until the very end but yeah like i never started it i never thought i'd be fighting in front of thousands of people yeah. and be on tv yeah it's into the millions now yeah now it's yeah it's millions i mean <laughs> it's amazing and yeah when i have to call call the call the curtain and one day it's gonna it's gonna be hard you know yeah, but sure yeah and i'm looking i'll probably try to stay active in other avenues you know yeah yeah i think that's the right way and i think since the last time you were here in fact quite a lot of that's changed you you had your gym set up in, in in where you were staying you've now moved out into your own facility above four elements yeah. Huddle park yeah uh, you've picked up a couple of new sponsors it seems and so yeah. it's so it's becoming like i say again even at this stage in your cre- career there seems to be a lot more maturity coming out in your career yeah you know, so well i mean yeah, yeah well that's it i mean you know when i was younger I could I would take whatever sponsor I could get, sure. you know, and a lot of the times it was product sponsors. Yeah. Uh, whereas now I'm at the point where, like, my lighty doesn't can't use whey protein yeah, yet. Can't you know, pay the so school fees. Yeah, and you know I've been got <coughs> like punched long enough to, to <laughs> say, well, I, this is what I deserve. If you want to sponsor me, like this, is, these are my terms. And and if you can't and you can't afford it, and but fair play to you. Um, but so I think I'm like it's obviously this is like my business. So I'm sure. I'm entitled to run it run it like that you know all my sponsors now are predominantly out of edenville sure you know i've got hyundai edenville sponsoring me i've got spartan arms on board i've got ridgeway race bar on board i've got red door cafe um edenville gearbox and diff you know um you know they're all on in their different capacities but they all edenville locals and it's because people have watched me for so long and and see how proud i am of edenville and yeah you know, I'm like really, really passionate about where I'm from, and like they want to, like they want to be part of that as well. You know, so. <coughs> but in the future, you know, I may have other sponsors. You know, but at this time, it's like everyone's out of the veil, and I feel, you know, they all came to me when like I'd just been dropped on my ass badly. Sure. Um, you know, because sponsors the sport. Sponsors come and go, and you know, you got to take what you get while you can, because you know they're gonna pull, and you know, like. I've had uh, like a big sponsor drop me. You know, the dude couldn't even give me two weeks. Like, couldn't even give me a month's notice. Yeah, sure. It was like two weeks. He dropped me just like that. And it's, I've got a family to feed. My family's relying on your money. Like, so there's no like, and I understand that. You know, that's how it is. So I'm going to align myself with people. I feel, you know, respect what, I, what I've achieved and, and at, you know, th- put value in what I do. And and that's the way forward. I'm not just gonna take anything. Sure, know? sure, man. And I think like it's from from a business side, it, it makes so much sense what's happened there with with, with that whole veil branding and how all of these bigger bigger brands, if we can say, have kind of associated themselves around you. Like yeah. when I saw it start happening, it made so much sense to me. You know what I mean? Because like I, I know we like about uh, Eden Vale and <laughs> sixteen ten and all that stuff, but it makes so much sense because you're a figure from an area you know what i mean and you've galvanized that and you've owned it you know what yeah. i mean you've created this whole you've turned a suburb into a brand yeah you know what i mean and That's so by doing that all of these other brands from the same suburb have jumped on and said well you know if i'm in edenville like l- let me give you a p- i'll give you the perfect example okay, cool. i recently bought a hyundai okay for my wife the the, the dealership I dealt with is so shit. The first thing that came to my head is like, hang on, there's a big dealership in Edenville. I know because they yes. sponsor you. Yes. So if I'm in Edenville, well, I'm just going to go to Edenville and take my car there. It makes so much sense. Yes. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. It makes so much sense. Red Door Cafe, same thing. I'm like, because like my in was in Edenville. I'm like, well, these oaks make food. You know, like I'm on a uh, ketogenic diet. These oaks make food for Dino. Maybe they've got something that can help me. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. all of these brand associations start to work. Yeah. And it makes so much sense in that area. You know what I mean? Because like if I'm driving through Edenville and I'm looking for something and I know they've sponsored you, yeah. in my head, I'm like, I know these guys are here. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're yeah. in this area. Yeah. You know? No, well that, that's, yeah. I mean, and that's exactly, I mean, you're saying that, and I hope they, they're all listening because that's exactly what they're after sure know, by aligning myself them, themselves with me and and getting like the mileage they get out of uh, you know a lot you know, and it's not like it's all about me like we're a partnership and i understand that sure. so you know i've got to promote their business and <coughs> and you know like we've uh, with, with everyone we've done is we've done we've done that you know with ridge we were have we were the f- they show the fights there like we sure. promoted from our social media pages from my pages which so all the followings everyone's knowing that they can go you know there's a little 
like fan club there at Ridgeway sure. and they got Vale Draft and then he normally puts it on special and everyone can go there and drink and you know so they've got to get the, it's like a business so one hand's washing the other and I'm then I'm I'm glad you know you point it out and I hope they're listening because you know that's exactly what what we want out of it is to say oh but okay Hyundai Edema sponsored Dino you know yeah man it's 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 like to watch that whole thing unfold was so amazing because there's no there's no textbook on this you know what I mean? There's nobody to say to you, uh, look, you know, for you to really step this up marketing wise, this is what you need to do. Yeah. There's no, there's no way. There's no. G- the funny thing is, like, um, I was listening to Joe Rogan was talking about the way that the Fatida brothers built the UFC up to be sold, and one day that'll be taught in Harvard. The way they did it will be taught in Harvard, yes. and like in in a similar sense, I think the way you've galvanized a brand, you've turned an entire suburb. Yeah. into a brand soon guys are going to start to think yeah, about well the ways that they can you know, recreate that, that, that brand was already there you no, know, sure. th- that brand was already there and you know there have been ma- many have tried and many have failed um you know and then w- and then we came along and you know we just we just had sick designs and you know it's what people want to wear and and then at the same time you know fortunate enough to to run it off the back you know of my following sure. which has been obviously very helpful um so yeah so the brand's there and that's like we love it and uh, you know like still it's not like at a point now where we're getting millions of t-shirt no, sure. sales sure. and sure. shit like that but you know everything we've wanted we've started doing we've got our own cuts of tea so our sure. teas are made to the cut we want yeah. the fabric we want like even down to the bloody stitching sure. you know it's our cuts of tea and now when people come to us and say oh, we just want blank tees because we want to put our shit on it they they, they get like a veil it's a veil tee and i think we yeah. got like a small little tag on it and that's it we got this but it's a veil tee with whatever they mm. want on it you know caps now as well we, we we're gonna like have our own veil cap as you would a flex fit you know these sure. are all things that we set out to do and like now you know these these obstacles or well these hurdles like we're starting to see them okay well, we're nearly 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 there we wanted a beer like the beers are out the beers sure. doing well you know we're already thinking of maybe like going on to, like doing another like maybe a veil ale or yeah, something sure. like that you know what i'm saying so yeah it's like we just, this is just like for fun for us you know what i'm yeah, saying sure. you know um yeah the beer thing was just we all everyone loves beer and yeah sure you know i was the first fighter <laughs> to do it yeah and many will follow suit sure. but yeah it's it's awesome and you know like even well's great little place and everyone's like so passionate about it so you know and the the, the brands it was already there like i said so you know we just we just capitalized on that and that's been great yeah 100 percent, man it's been uh, it's been enjoyable to watch i must say it's been it's been very cool to see how that whole business has unfolded and yeah. and how this whole massive alignment came about it was i think it's i think it's genius to be yeah, honest well, i think it really hey, works well it's i'm glad that people like you know are looking from the outside sure. and seeing this but yeah it's it's nowhere near where we we know it it's going or, or where it's gonna be but like we're heading in the right direction and you know the guys are all still t- doing their own like running their own businesses sure. so it's like when we got time and you know on the group we're going like who can get to the brewery today yeah, yeah. you know like my partners are great because you know like in fight camp and that like they know my schedule because it's training and then i've got to come back and i've got to like fit all my daily clients in. so you know they've really like when i'm in camp pick up the slack from from their side um but yeah, we all just, it's just three dudes passionate about where we're from. Um, we've all had something we could bring to the party and it's just, yeah, it's just getting better and better. So go the veil. 100% man. <laughs> Anyways, bro, thanks very much for your time, man. Uh, hopefully we, we, we get to see you in November. Somebody send a pigeon to Sean DeLange. Apparently yeah. he's impossible to get hold of, so... I don't know how they yeah. send him a pigeon or whatever it's they do. The mountains, <laughs> yeah. Get a hold of him and get that bastard down here. Yeah, I think I think that sh- you know I, I didn't even actually think about it until yeah. now, and I think why not? Why not <laughs> end off the year with a cracker? Um, yeah, I'm sure he's evolved. I've definitely evolved, and sure, you know, it's two guys that just love to fight. Um, yeah, hundred percent. You know, I was mentioning earlier that like I saw him down there and that, and like we had a chat, and like he's a good kid and yeah i like what he brings to fights and he's not scared to throw down um yeah. which you know it's what we all want sure 
someone that's going to come at you or at least try to take your head off, not just lay and pray. Yeah, you know what sure, I mean? <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, he comes to fight, man. And like I say, he's also, he's also obviously like he's he's got this new resurgence where he he really wants to focus on fighting. Yeah. You know, you've you've said to us that you that there's a new version of you that really wants to eke out the wins, whatever way needs to be done. If it's banging, if it's being more technical, whatever yeah. it is. So I think, even though it's not a massive amount of time, I think to see that rematch again will still bring a very different fight. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred no, hundred percent. Uh, you know. We we may f- f- fight the fight the same, or we may not. But yeah. you know, it's. it's I know I'm tuning yeah. in to see what's gonna happen. Yeah, everyone's gonna tune in to see what happens. <laughs> Is it the old Dino that arrives or the new, or a sure. mixture of both? <laughs> but you know, he's you know he's still young. I'm t- he's also coming off a loss. You know, to mm. Cummins, who's, who's someone I still want. Um, but yeah, let's let's have a, another crack at it and end off the year and give give like my Joburg fans what they sure. want. You know, we gave his Cape Town fans what they want, and you know, I think that fight with him down there actually gained me some supporters because I wasn't I wasn't booed this time, yeah. um, and I even actually heard the crowd cheering for me at one point. Sure. And I was like edging them on, you know, <laughs> and the, like I even made <laughs> the ref wait. He was like, yeah. you know, like trying to get my attention <laughs> after round one, and I was up and down cheering, like cheering the crowd. I can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, Dude, are you ready? Are you ready? No, nah, I'm ready. Let's go. You know? So <laughs> only I would be able to pull sure. something like that off. You sure. know, like we'll we'll fight when Dino's ready. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. Let's see. November, the longer would be cool. Um, but yeah, I know UFC might have other plans. But sure. I'm sure, I'm sure they'll get back to me soon once they got this contender right what is, yeah. con- what is it actually the fighter called? the fighter <laughs> the fighter once they get all of the stuff out of the way sure. i'm sure they will anyways bro thanks very much for your time man we wish yeah. you all the best and and, and hopefully we'll, we'll get a fight announcement soon um we'll be waiting with bated breath i'm sure i think no al thanks thanks for again for having me on the show i uh, love what you're doing for for south african MMA. thank you so much man you know as fighters don't really have a voice unless yeah, we sure current and you know or you know doing our promo stuff for efc so yeah thanks for giving us this platform and yeah i'm sure i'll chat to you soon awesome man anytime we appreciate all the support and all the best man shot ciao cool